Hello again. Welcome to another episode of Leading from Alignment with our good friend, John Opaluski. And for a second time in a row, second week in a row, our special guest. How are you today, John? Jim, I'm doing really uh, well. And I'm glad that we have Paul Firestein back with us yes. uh, for episode 170. Paul, welcome back. Thanks for being with us. Hey, it's great to be back. I thought Jim gave a great hook at the end of the last one that he said I was younger and now I'm not so much. And I was once smaller and now I'm not so much. Yeah, I meant the, great I meant the churches yeah. that you pastored. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was you guys that brought up the whole that you've known each other since you had hair. So I, yes. I when, we were, when we weren't recording, I said, well, yeah, I once had hair and now I have hair. That's the uh, if you're if you're listening, that didn't make any sense. But it, it's. I mean, I know that as we get older, we do tend to rotate the crops with what was once in the northern field kind of migrates to the east and the west field and the, and the south field. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm sometimes I, I shave my back now. No one wants to know this. What are we here for today, John? It's not, it's not to talk about that. For Jim, sure. I'm going to jump in and rescue you. <laughs> so, Paul, uh, in episode uh, 169, uh, he just had some really amazing things to share with us about leadership and uh, what's, you know, what's the same no matter where you lead and no matter what size of entity you lead. And, and would you take a minute maybe to just kind of recap some of those yeah. highlights for us? Yeah, sure. You know, um, talked a little bit last time about the fact that no matter where you're pastoring, if you're pastoring, um, that the shepherd is also always a sheep. And that yeah. uh, we, we, we need to not only care for those around us, but be cared for by the Lord as well. Um, the people, uh, you, you know, we live in a day and an age where people are coming and going from church with everything we've been through. And we have to keep in mind that people don't belong to us and the church doesn't belong to us. It belongs to Jesus and people belong to God. And I think the last thing we talked about in terms of axioms and wherever we're at ministry is that. Um, it's always best to believe the best about wherever you're at and to look for the strengths of the congregation that you're in rather than disparaging their weaknesses and what's happening yeah. there. Yeah, it was so good. You know, uh, that first one, I've been thinking about it. Um, we talk about self-care with pastors. I mean, every day that we work, we're we're having that somebody on this team is having that conversation many times multiple times in a day and um i don't think we can emphasize enough how important it is for you as a leader to take ownership of your well-being you're yeah. it, it, it's it, you are called to steward the limited resources that god has given you time energy, emotional energy, mental energy, uh, relationships. No one will steward that for you. And, and you know, it might sound like a broken record coming from us, but, but boy, if there is a message that this podcast has tried to communicate <clears throat> over the last almost three years now, it's this one, that you must prioritize caring in a biblical way for your well-being on all levels. And so I'm so glad that you brought that up, Paul, um, because it's it's another voice saying the same thing, and uh, yeah. we appreciate you know you you coming uh, across with that as it really uh, is important to us. Um, well, I wanted to ask you this, and this is kind of a broad question. I'm sure you could answer this in 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 a dozen different ways, but from your perspective. What are some of the biggest challenges facing leaders today? Yeah, I um, I thought about this a bit, um, and and again, I think depending on where people are at or what they're going through. But a couple of things um, that I think, broadly speaking, one is we're leading in uncertain times, um, mm. and we have been uh, since before COVID, but it's. It just really seems like we're trying to lead in uncertain times. I think that's a big yeah. challenge. Um, another challenge I think leaders are facing is managing ministry tensions. And I think there yeah. are some unique tensions to ministry that we tend to go to one side of or the other that um, is really a challenge for us. And then the third thing I think is 
I think we're living in a day of information overload. I don't think anyone yeah. would disagree with that. But I, sometimes I feel like the menu is so large, we uh, we don't know what to pick. You know, we don't know what to do because there are so many options before us. And I think those are three really big challenges that that people in leadership, not just in the church, but in general, are facing right now. So we're gonna have to back up and unpack that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you take you know, those um, one at a time? Maybe one at a time. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's I think it's difficult to lead in uncertainty. Uh, at least it has been for me, in the sense that I want to say charge, but I don't know what to charge. You know, what hill are we supposed to take? And if you look around, I mean, we started, uh, and it's been a couple of years ago, but I still have a little COVID chaos in my life that, you know, we started the year 2020 and everyone's so excited, 2020 vision. And the year ended in 2020 division. I mean, it, yeah. it went, yeah. you know, it did not go anything like people thought it was going to go. And that was a setback for leaders. And then, you know, we have, there's, there's, um, things going on in our culture right now that, that seem to be like tsunamis that come up, you know, some issues around racial tension, you know, redefinition of marriage. Um, there's just all these social uh, undercurrents that are happening. And, and it, it, so it's very uncertain, you know, what are we supposed to, what are we supposed to do? How do we respond? And I think, I think one of the things that's helped me is to spend time with an unchanging God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's helped to bring a little peace to my life. And as long as I spend time with an unchanging God, it allows me to adjust to the culture around me because I'm, because he won't change. I can. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, you know, just, a, am in college right now for my master's degree. And one of my courses, I was required to spend four hours with a Bible, a notepad and a pen, turn off all technology you know, and it's been a long time since I've just had a Bible, a notepad and a pen and no technology. And it was the most refreshing Mm. four hours that I've had in a long time. Uh, And I just, you know, sat out and stared out my window, you know, uh, or got outside a little bit, walked and prayed. And I thought, I think we need more of this um, Mm. in our Mm. uncertainty of leadership, just a place where we can be safe and things are certain and we can meet with God. I think it's, I think it's really, really important for us. And, and, and along those lines, you know, in, in these uncertain times, I just want to encourage other leaders. I think this is what I'm trying to do. Just do your best. Um, you know, our church, uh, we, we decided we needed a, a new building, a new sanctuary. We're, we're having four services. We're back to four mm. services now after oh. COVID, you know, and uh, church continues to grow. One of my staff members, you know, now, now the interest rates are going up. What was going to cost us $8 million for a building is now going to cost us $11.5 million. One of my staff members recently said to me, said, hey, what if we get two years out there and we're supposed to be ready to go and we don't have enough money because now the interest rates are so high? And my response was, I'm just going to do the best I know how. We're going to deal with that when we get there. If that's what happens, this is what we need to do. I'm just doing my best and I'm going to stick with it. And I think that's part of what we need to do. I think that's that's very important. So you mentioned you mentioned ministry tensions. Can you give an example of maybe yeah, one of those? Absolutely. So I wrote down a few ministry tensions that I experienced. One is, you know, the Holy Spirit versus systems. I'd like to unpack that one in, in a minute. Um, okay. I think there's tension between personal health uh, for people in ministry and personal sacrifice. I think Jesus mm-hmm. has called us to sacrifice, but he's yeah. also called us to health. I think there's, um, there's a tension between being biblical and relevant um, that's going on in our culture. I think there's a tension about caring for the flock and self-care, about staff uh, health and staff fruitfulness. Um, and mm-hmm. I think there's just a lot of tensions, you know. And I, the thing I want to say about that is I think all of us land on one side of the tension more than the other in each of those areas. Yeah, so true. we're we're going to either land on self-care more than 
caring for the flock. We're going to land more on maybe the spirit side than the system side or the system side more. And I want to encourage people to wrestle with those tensions and, and never approach them as either or, but both and. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's, I, I, I think that is a big thing for the hour that we live in is to wrestle with those tensions. So can I, can I just speak into that real quick, Paul? Yeah. Acts 20, 28, Paul says, keep watch over yourself and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. He didn't say or. <laughs> right. He yes. said both. Yes. And I think I think that's what you're saying. And and I find myself all those tensions you mentioned, I find myself in the in I, I, I desperately want to find the, the the 50 yard line. You know, so to speak, <laughs> yeah. between those two end zones. And what I'm finding is I never find the 50 yard line. I'm I'm vacillating between maybe the 30s or the 35 yard lines. I'm in the middle somewhere. Um, and I've given up trying to find the exact spot in the middle because I don't know if I ever find that, I'm only there for a moment. Yeah. And does any of that make sense or am I am I talking gibberish? I think it it makes perfect sense and I think that is that is the wrestling that we have to do, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that what we tend to do we tend to over spiritualize one side or the other of that. Um yeah. You know, and all the way back to, you know, one of my big things that I've shared with our, our team and often share in coaching, you know, when God created the world, he first made the systems, you know, that, you know, the hydrosphere, the atmosphere, right? All, everything that would sustain human life, he created. And then he breathed his spirit into man and man came to life. Systems could not create life or breathe life, but they help sustain life. So it's so churches, I think this is very important or for pastors. Do we need the Holy Spirit working? Absolutely. But it's not just, hey, let's we have to have another prayer meeting or we just need the Holy Spirit to move. We also need systems in place to help sustain life. And we could go through this balancing act on every one of these. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and and we have to wrestle with that. And what I've had to do, you know, we we recently actually just did an assessment with our staff and measured where we were at. One of the things that came up for us is I've, I've focused too much on systems recently. So one of the things that came back in the assessment is the staff said, we don't pray enough together. Like Mm -hmm. we don't, we don't do this enough. And so this next year we're making adjustments right now. We're back on the other side of, Hey, we're going to spend some time praying together. I'm going to send them away for four hours and make them take a notepad and a Bible and pray. So it's always yeah. just the back and forth wrestling with those. Yeah. You know, I was thinking of as, as kind of another, uh, another wrestling match would be faith and wisdom, right? It's like, they're they're You have to realize they're not enemies. They're actually really good friends, but it's up to us to understand which one we're supposed to listen to at any given moment. If we're in the middle of the lake, in the middle of the night, in the middle of a storm, wisdom says, stay in the boat, unless faith says, get out. Yes. So I, I don't, I mean, Peter's certainly right to get out, and the eleven are certainly right to stay in. One one had a word, and the other ones had a dad <laughs> that said, <laughs> "If you're in the middle of the lake in the middle of the night, stay in the boat, son." You know. Yes. So yes. I, I I think there is a time to do foolish things, and that's called faith. And there's a there's a time to do wise things, and that's not called a lack of faith. That's and I, I don't. If you did hit the fifty yard line, I think someone would move the field anyway. They really. <laughs> There's a, there's a, but knowing which one is my servant that I should be listening to, it's advising me right now what to believe or what to do. Yeah. And that's, that's the issue. Yeah. yeah. That's so good. Um, Hey, so the, um, you know, one of the things we, we talked about when I was out there was that, you know, what's your passion, pain, proficiency, and, yeah. and really that sweet spot where you just, what I'm doing right now brings me so much joy. Yeah. You know, I just, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm passionate about what I'm doing. It's relieving a pain in the world that really bugs me. And and I've been gifted by God to do this. Like what, what is, what you're doing right now in your life? It just is bringing you the most, the most, ah, that was worth getting out of bed for. Yeah. Um, great question. I'm going to give um, what people might think is a superficial answer, but I think it's really important. My grandkids right now bring me <laughs> Dude, incredible that's not superficial. joy. Yeah. I cannot... 
I, yeah. and I don't want to go down the wrong trail here, but you know, this next year, by the middle of next year, I'll have nine grandkids and yeah. uh, they are such, yeah, it, it's been so worth having four kids, you know, and, and everything that we went through. <laughs> Um, you finally, know, we, it's I finally loaded, so I, worth having for all, all the grandkids that are in Montana right now. We loaded them in around Halloween time. We loaded them in a trailer, put a few little bales of hay in it. Um, I opened the back window of my truck and I was playing frozen music as loud as it would could, could, could go a 52 <laughs> or 53 on the radio scale, you know, and yeah. um, my dad and I couldn't even hear in the cab of the truck. The music was so loud. And my oldest granddaughter, who's six, has discovered the rear view mirror of my truck. And she's mouthing the words, go faster, Poppy, go faster. Right. <laughs> right. And it's it's just the joy yeah. of uh, of that, the fruit of, you know, Amy and I, you know, be married and having kids and raising our kids and trying to, you know, lead our kids to Jesus. And then the fruit of grandkids. I think it's part of God's grand plan. So mm -hmm. it really has, that brings so much energy to my life. The other thing that I'm doing, um, I'm back in school. I mentioned, um, you know, going to get my master's degree. I really want to, I want to be able to uh, teach younger leaders, uh, at, even at a college level, you know, uh, yeah. you know, for some, you know, help them with their bachelor's degree. Um, if this is going to open the door and the truth is, I mean, it's taken me 55 years uh, to 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 just maybe even be myself as much as I should mm -hmm. be. And I'm a learner. Like, I enjoy learning. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, sometimes I get stressed about it. But I also think it's fun to read six books in three weeks and try to write reports on them. You know, it's um, it's mm -hmm. very it's it invigorates me um, to learn. And everybody's different. But you know, that's, that's been a big thing. And then, and then I think um, the biggest thing, uh, I, last episode, I talked about my family coming to faith in Jesus. If there's yeah. anything that energizes me, it's just watching uh, that story yeah. repeated. Uh, you know, four or five years ago, uh, we baptized a gal that who six months before that said she was an atheist, didn't believe in God. Now yeah. she's, uh, you know, she got baptized on an Easter Sunday and now she's not at our church, but she's at another church and she's a small group leader at another church, mm -hmm. uh, leading people to faith in Jesus. Right and man, that's what I live for. I mean, that's, that's it, you know, mm -hmm. to re reach another person, another family. It's, it's a big so deal. Good. Yep. That's yeah. so good. And I appreciate the emotion with that attached to that yeah. all, because um, I know you, and I know that that's that's real. That's not phony. That's that's real. And uh, we appreciate what you said, and we also appreciate the emotion that came with mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, Paul, there are there are days, not a lot of days, but every once in a while, I think about what I do differently as a young guy. You know, like. Uh, I, I, uh, I wouldn't recommend what I did, you know, right out of college, I was in ministry and then I was a, I was a lead pastor at age 29. I believe Jim was uh, a lead pastor at age 29 too, just very young. Yeah. Um, and, and I've thought about what would I tell my, what I tell the younger version of myself, the 22 year old version of John, if I could go back in time and just say, Hey, Hey John, here's a few things you really need to know. What would you tell the 22 year old version of Paul uh, yeah. if you could do that? I mean, there's there's lots of things I thought, you know, I tell myself to avoid this or that. But, you know, really thinking about that question, um, I, I just ticked through a few. One, I would tell myself it's going to be a wild ride. Enjoy it. Yeah, it's going to be a wild ride. It's not going to go the way that you think. Just try to enjoy it because I think, you know, so much of my life uh, early on trying to control how things go or the circumstances or situations. 
and you just literally get the tar beat out of you. So I, that's one of the things I tell myself. I tell a young mm-hmm. leader, same thing. It's going to be a wild ride. This is not going to end the way that you think it is. It's not going <laughs> to go the way that you think it is. I don't care how much you've envisioned, you know, so just try to enjoy it, right? Number two, God is more powerful than you know. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid. It's good. He's more powerful than you know. Um, so I'm very aware of, and I think most people are, of our frailty, our humanness, our lack. I'm very aware. I would tell myself, you know what? It's not about you knowing you. Know, know who God is, and he's much more powerful. Um, third thing, you're not who you say you are. You're not who other people say you are. You are who God says you are. And I think there's times, uh, if I was going to pick a leader when I was 22 years old, I wouldn't be the leader I would pick. You know, if I was going to pick a leader in when I was 12 years old and God said, I'm going to call you in a ministry, I would not be the person I would pick. But I'm not who I say I am. I'm not who you say I am. I am who God says I am. Mm-hmm. And then um, the fourth thing I have that I'll kind of wrap that part up with, uh, you're in over your head. <laughs> but God is with you. You're in over your head, but God is with you, right? And I, I believe this with all my heart. God does not call people who are equipped. I believe he equips people he calls and that he does it along the way. He, he, part of your, so yes, get equipped, but he's, he's going to call you and then he's going to meet you at each stage of your mountain. And he's going to give you what you need to get through what you need to get through at that stage in your mountain. That's what I believe. Yep. Well, those are good. Uh, It's funny. That was the thought that I had too, was the first thing I would say is relax. I, you know, breathe, breathe between contractions. I, I, I think about so much, like, I, I hate this, you know, three guys talking about childbirth. What do we know? But it, 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 it looked pretty unpleasant, but that the whole, all the Lamaze class stuff, like that doesn't take away the pain, but that, that gives you an understanding of what you may experience and, and, and just being patient through that process. Yeah. And, I, and I, I think of that so often in, in our lives of faith, you just breathe between the contractions. There will be very difficult you know, painful things that happen. That'd be wonderful things that happen. But in the end, God is so faithful. Yes. And if you can look back in your past and point out an area where he wasn't, then then maybe you've got a right to be afraid today, but he has been. Yes. So there's, I have no right to, I'm imagining something that's never happened before, looking at my future saying, but what if, what if, what if, yep. instead of, instead of saying the power of what is, what is, what is. Yes. And I, I would just, I would, I would shake me, man. Like, this is going to be so much fun if you just relax, yes. you know, and, and let me, yes. yeah, so much fun, you know, yes. every bill will be paid. You know, yes. your, your wife will love you. Your, yes. your, your kids will love you. Eventually your, your grandkids are, are worth not killing your kids for when they were teenagers, you know, just, yep. I, matter of fact, my, my dad told me this before he died, my, my stepfather who raised me, he said, I know the secret of life. I thought he was kidding. I said, sure you do, but no, I really do. I said, okay, but I'm really listening. He said, this is the secret of life. Every day you wake up and say, this is the best day of my life. Yes. I, I'm not, not missing what was or longing yep. for what is. This is the best day of my yes. life. Grab onto Jesus's hand and go live it. And at the end of the day, fall down on that same bed exhausted, saying that was so much fun. I can't wait to wake up again tomorrow. And he was 84 years old when he told me that. And he said, I wasted so many years wishing my kids were little or wishing they were older or wishing yep. is it, today is the best day of your life. Don't waste it. And I, I really think there's a lot of truth in that. Yep. So Paul, thank you uh, again uh, for spending some time with us. I, I feel those who are watching and listening uh, today are, are leaving with, uh, I think they're leaving with some things they can really grab onto that yeah. one and, and challenge. Um, at the same time. So thanks for spending time opening up your heart to us, uh, your your leadership to us uh, Yeah, over these last two weeks. Uh, we, we're so glad you're part of our team. Uh, yeah. We feel honored to have you uh, serve with us at Converge Coaching. And uh, thanks again for being with us. Thanks. Thanks right for on. the opportunity. It's been great spending time. And 
Hey, I think just what Jim said, seize the day. Like God has brought us here for this time. Let's, let's just Amen. thrive in it. Yeah. Thanks guys. I, I want to point out in closing that you're looking at an $11 million building project. You're in your mid fifties, your grandfather, you're getting your master's degree. And I don't know if you're watching, this makes sense. If you're listening, he doesn't have a single gray hair on his head. That's the blessing of God. God, God will keep you young. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, I, think, uh, I think one of the great things about being a part of Converge is I, I this some people might call this work or ministry. I this is this is one of the more refreshing things I've been able to do in my day to day is spend time with you guys. And I want to say that to people that are watching and listening. They're um I, I don't know. I, it isn't like people that, that are part of Converge can't be like a sage on the stage, but we're we do really good work when we're just a guide by the side. Um friendship. Yeah relationships, fatherly advice, brotherly advice is really what I think is, is some of the milestones, some of the keystones of, of what Converge does. And if we could help you in that way, uh, convergecoach.com. Did I get that right, John? Yes. Convergecoach.com. There's a link right there. Boom. I'd like to spend half an hour, just up to half an hour talking about my next step, talking about my last step, talking about my misstep, um, dreams, hopes, regrets. We're, we're here. Now, we're not, we're not professional counselors. But but what our job is to hear what God's put in your heart and take what you see and what God sees into and actually making it what we can all see and helping you do that in a way that you survive, that you thrive, that you enjoy. So Converge is uniquely gifted, I think, at, at that. And we hope that we'll be able to continue to help you. And again, if you're listening to this today, it comes out, watching this today, it comes out again, it's Tuesday and you haven't quit. So that that makes you a winner. God bless you. Keep going. We're praying for you. We believe in your dreams as you continue to lead from alignment.